The map range node is one of the most useful nodes in Blender's shader editor, but if you're not used to using it, it can be a little bit confusing at first. In fact, longtime CG Cookie member Omar, who's already quite good with nodes, asked this on Twitter. He said, in the map range node, you change the ranges knowing what to expect, referring to the fundamentals of texturing course, uh, instead of crazy clicking like we all do. Even though I know what it does, I always have a hard time predicting remapping the values in my head. Do you have a conceptual trick in your head that you go to? And I do, so I'm going to show you my mental model of how I think about the map range node so that I don't guess around as I click it too much, and I'm going to show you that with an actual 3D model. So here I have set up a interactive graph to help show you what the map range node does. So when we change any of these inputs, it's going to change the Z location of some of these points, and I've set that up using drivers. So here we have a noise texture, and I've just modified this a little bit so that we know exactly what the minimum and maximum values are. So if I change the minimum and maximum, let's say I take the minimum and increase it so it's overall brighter, then you can see it's changing the minimum here on the graph as well. And if I change the maximum, then it's going to change the maximum that's being input into the map range node. So this blue section is illustrating uh, what the map range node is doing. And right now you'll notice that it's not doing a whole lot. The inputs are exactly equaling the outputs. So if I have a minimum of 0.25, and a maximum of 1.5, then the output that's going into the emission here is still going to be 0 0.25 over here and 1.5 up here. So the inputs are exactly equaling the outputs. And that's because the map range node works by transforming the values. And right now the from maximum and the from minimum are the same as the to minimum and the to maximum. So as long as these values are the same, then the node is going to do nothing at all, no matter what those values are. So even if we have a from minimum of one, a from maximum of 1.5, a to minimum of one, and a to maximum of 1.5, again, it doesn't matter what these values are, then the inputs are always going to equal the outputs. I'll set this back to zero and one. Now let's see what happens when we change the two values. First, I'll increase the to maximum. So I'll set the two maximum to zero while leaving everything else the same. Now you can see that everything that used to be considered one, because that's the from maximum, is now going to equal two. So everything that was one now equals two. But since the from minimum hasn't changed, anything that used to equal zero still also now just equals zero. But what that means is that the input range, uh, the range of numbers that are in here, you know, all of these different pixels that make up this texture, whether it's this one that's, you know, a little bit lower than that one, there's just some range of pixels that are anywhere between zero and one, now are somewhere in between zero and two. So anything that used to say equal 0.5, right in the middle here, now has been transformed, and now equals somewhere around one. So it's extrapolating from these two transformations to find all of the other values. So anything that's down here, you know, isn't going to be transformed very much, maybe just a little bit, but anything that's closer to the top is going to be transformed much like the two maximum. So it's just taking our values and stretching them out. And this even works for values outside of that transformation range. So let's say we increase our noise maximum and decrease our minimum here. And you can see exactly what's happening. It's taking this transformation and applying it to something that's even above that value. So let's say the noise maximum is 1.5. Then it's going to take this same kind of curve, if you will, even though it's not a curve internally, that's just for illustration purposes to show that it's being transformed. But anything that's above this value is going to be transformed in the same way that the maximum was transformed. And same thing down here, anything that's below the minimum is going to be transformed in the same way as the minimum, which in this case is no change whatsoever. So anything that was negative 0.5 over here now also equals negative 0.5 in the result. So again, all we're doing with the two values is we're just stretching or squashing the range of values that we have. I'll go ahead and set this back to zeros and ones, and we can take a look at the from values. Based on what you've just learned, what would you guess would happen if we decreased the from maximum? Well, it's going to make the resulting maximum a little bit higher. And that's because anything that, if we set the from maximum at 0.5, it's taking everything that used to be 0.5, and it's now equaling 1. So now everything that used to equal 1 
is now greater than one, and in this case is about 1.5. So by decreasing the from maximum, we're making those brighter values even brighter. If we increase the from minimum, then we'll make those darker values even darker. So let's do that. Let's just decrease this by just a bit. And let's say everything that used to be about 0 0.25 now equals zero. And because it's extrapolating that transformation to anything that's below that value and in between, then anything that used to be zero is now going to be less than zero, just like that. Now, an important option in the map range node is clamping. And that's going to squash everything down to be exactly between zero and one, just to make sure that we're not outside of that range, because that's important for some things like plugging in colors to your principal BSDF, for example, to make sure that we're not reflecting 110% of the light coming in or anything like that. So let's say we go ahead and clamp this, and I've visualized this as just red, showing that all of this data is now lost. So anything that was one over here, that is now equal to 1.5 in the result, is actually just being squashed down and equaling one. So this whole area has just been essentially uh, erased and crushed down to equal just one. And anything that was below zero has been squashed up and now just equals zero. So no matter how far below zero it is, of course, it'll change the range of values that are considered below zero. Um, but once it actually gets to the end of that transformation, then it'll just equal zero. So we don't have any negative numbers coming out of this node. So I'll set this back to zeros and ones, and let's do a little bit of practice. Let's say I have an input that's between negative one and one. How would I squash those values down to make sure that they are between zero and one instead? Well, as you might guess, all I need to do is change the from minimum to negative one. And there we go. Anything that used to be negative one now just equals zero, and all of the other values in between have been transformed accordingly. Let's say I have another input between zero and one, but I want to make more of those dark values equal zero exactly. How would I do that? Well, all I would need to do is just increase the from minimum and turn on clamping. So if I increase the from minimum and clamp this, then anything that's below, in this case, 0 0.47, all of these values here, this range of values, now equals zero or below. But because we've clamped it, we know that we can't have any negative numbers, so they all just equal zero. Hopefully this visual illustration helps explain how the map range node works. It's not 100% accurate, it's just for illustration purposes only. If you want to mess around with this file and see how I set up the interactive graph itself, then I'll provide the download for that on cgcookie.com in the link below. And in general, if you want to learn more about how to get started with texturing in Blender and how to use nodes and all of that type of stuff, then I recommend checking out the fundamentals of texturing, which I just recently released. If you have any questions, for example, like this, then you can just post below the lesson and I'll be sure to answer it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.